Take it away, Zach. Robert Smalls was born into slavery in 1839 on the McKee Plantation in Beaufort, South Carolina. In 1851, at the age of 12, the McKees sent Robert to work in Charleston. Of course, all the money that he earned had to go back to his master in Beaufort. It was in Charleston where Robert fell in love with the sea as he watched the boats coming in and out of Charleston Harbor. When he was 15 years old, Robert became a dockhand and was eventually promoted to wheelman of the planter, a 147-foot wood-burning steamer that hauled cotton. After the American Civil War began, the planter was converted into an armed Confederate ship for carrying soldiers and supplies. As wheelman of the planter, Robert learned a series of secret steam whistle signals that all boats must give while passing the harbor's many Confederate forts. In late 1861, the Union Navy set up a blockade at the entrance of Charleston Harbor. Robert knew that with the Union Navy so close, freedom was within his grasp. He devised a plan to steal the planter on a night when the white officers, officers were ashore. He would then sail to the Union blockade with his family, as well as the families of the other enslaved African Americans who worked on the planter. Robert got his chance in May of 1862 while white officers were ashore. ashore he and the other crewmen stole the planter. They gathered their families and sailed for the Union blockade. Dressed as the captain of the planter, Robert gave all the appropriate steam whistle signals and passed all the Confederate forts undetected. After the Civil War, Robert returned to Beaufort and purchased the McKee House where he had once been enslaved. He was also elected to South Carolina's legislature and fought for equal rights for African Americans all across the state. Wow, Zach, that, 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 the way you told that, 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 that should be a movie. I mean, this, it should. <laughs> this is one of the things I love about this, where we're learning about things right here in the Carolinas, that aren't in a lot of history books that we had in school. So that's why we're doing this on homeschool. I love this. And we have a special guest coming up in, later in the hour, right? We absolutely do. There's a special Charlotte connection with Robert Smalls. We're going to have a special guest share that with us. All right. I like it. Hey, it's Wilson's World Homeschool with Zach the Bowtie. Kind of, we, we told you a little bit. Now we're going to tell you more. Absolutely. So I want to introduce my friend, Michael Turner Webb. He's a historian in Charlotte. And, uh, you know, earlier in the hour, Wilson, you and I discussed Robert Smalls, his escape to freedom on the planter, his time in the legislature during Reconstruction. But there is a Charlotte connection to Robert Smalls. And uh, back in the before times, Michael did this great presentation on the Charlotte connection. And I knew that he was the man for this job to, to, to share this story with us. So please welcome my friend. Turner Webb. Michael, what is Robert Smalls' Charlotte Connection? Yes. Again, I would like to thank you all for having me on the show. Well, well, he had a daughter by the name of Elizabeth Smalls Banfield. Once her husband passed away as the postmaster, she would take over as the postmistress in Beaufort, South Carolina. Once she retired from that post, she and her three daughters would eventually move to Charlotte, North Carolina. And particularly, she, due to segregation, she, um, she moved in a segregated African-American community called Biddleville Community. And so she was around 52 years old when she, her and her three daughters decided to move here in Charlotte. In fact, one of her three daughters, uh, received a teaching position here in Charlotte. And so that was one of the main reasons why she, along with her, her three daughters, ended up moving to Charlotte. And there behind you, you're at a specific location for this reason, right? What's that house there? Yeah, the house behind me is where she, she and her three daughters live. In fact, her three daughters would eventually uh, get married and all three of them would live in this historic Biddleville community. Wow! And we've talked so, before with the with the Levine Museum in the New South, and some of the Biddleville and some of some of that history right there from that neighborhood. So that's some really great stuff. And this is so cool, kind of having you on because we're hearing about these things that sometimes feel kind of distant, but but you can see the house right there, and just it, it, some of these things weren't that long ago. No, not at all. In fact, she lived to be over 100 years old. And so she passed away in the 1950s in this neighborhood. Wow. Yep. This is some amazing yep. stuff. Yep. Well, listen, uh, Michael, thank you so much. And, and, and Zach, uh, thanks for bringing in your historian friend. I'm telling you, when, when we get through all this COVID stuff, 
I want to come hang with all you historians because you got cool bow ties and you got cool hats. <laughs> yeah, definitely, definitely. And for people who are interested in wanting to learn more about Biddleville community, um, just go on Charlotte Mecklenburg Historic Preservation. Yeah. I would like to give a shout out to Dr. Hanchett and also Dr. Morrow for writing up a great piece on the history of Biddleville community. A Dr. lot of notable Tom, people lived here. Um, and FYI, my father was born on this street. He, he, his parents were neighbors of Elizabeth Smalls Banfield. And their house is, I would say, three houses down towards the right of me. Wow. The uh, house is still standing today. <laughs> wow. I, man. Cool bow ties and cool hats, and, and you can see that house right there. Wow, that's some really good stuff. Hey, uh, Michael, thank you so much for joining us today. Definitely. Thank you guys for having me.